हेलो असलम गाइज टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू आवर ब्रिक मैजनरी चैप्टर एंड नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू बी स्टार्ट विद द अदर डिफरेंट टॉपिक्स टू कंप्लीट दिस चैप्टर सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू बी डिस्कस अबाउट द वॉल जंक्शंस द प्लेसेस वेयर द वॉल्स ऑफ सेम और डिफरेंट वर्ड्स मीट्स और क्रॉसेस ईच अदर और कॉल्ड एज वॉल जंक्शंस The type of the wall junctions may be mainly or broadly be two. That first one straight junctions and second one squint junctions. So straight junctions mean that the angle uh, may be uh, the right angle. Okay, so like this. And if this angle will be uh, not right angle, so any obtuse or ninety uh, or less than ninety, greater than ninety, so you may have the squint junction. So at an angle uh, greater than or less than ninety. will be the second one and the uh, angle equal to 90 may be the straight junctions so the junctions formed when two walls crossing each other at right angle are called as straight junctions so you may have the corner junctions as in straight junction you may have the t junctions so corner junction mean just this type of junction and t junction mean you have this type of the crossing and cross junctions mean you have all four sides you may have the wall so uh, then you have the squint coins the corner formed when two walls are meeting at some an, an angle is called as obtuse queen or the acute queens okay so less than 90 and greater than 90 so two options be there uh, when you have the squint junctions so for squint junctions you may have the corners having uh, meeting the walls at some an angle so the angle may be greater than 90 or maybe less than 90 so finally those corners are formed by just adjusting the corners or the junctions by putting a different type of the bricks are called as queens so you are familiar now with this word queen that if you are going to be uh, cut your brick along the length so it will be I mean any brick along the length or along the width if you are cutting a brick to adjust the corners or the junctions of the wall it is going to be called as squint uh, queens and if these corners are at some angle so you are going to be said as squint queens so here you can see uh, the corner junctions this is this these figures on right and left hand side uh, you can uh, see it by yourself i am only going to be explain the first figures first two figures okay so the units for these figures are in si so the first figure on left hand side our figure a is going to give you the dimension of the wall 20 cm by 20 cm okay so uh, what does it means that the thickness of the wall is 20 cm for for one side at the junction or at the corner of the wall and 20 cm on the other so mean to equal dimensional or equal thickness wall are going to be meet with each other at this particular corner and this is a corner junction mean a, a simple 90 degree junction and it's a corner it's not a t or not a square so the corner junction is going to give you just two walls meeting with each other at 90 degree angle okay so this angle is 90 degree and here the first example is when the thickness is same okay so this is going to show you that how the bricks are going to be formed and how at the corner the junctions you are going to be adjust uh, the queens the corner bricks so here you can see the 9 inch thick walls and the header uh you can say bond is there I mean here english bond and the flemish bonds are there so this is the first one is the english bond here it is written at the end of this figure this is for the english bond this figure and this is for the flemish bond so for the english bond you can see that uh, you may have header on in one row and you have the stretcher in the second uh, you can say row and this row is obviously b are uh, going to be give you the proper you can say arrangement in header and in stretcher form so if in the form of header you are going to lay your bricks then you can see that at corner you have to place one queen brick 
okay so here you can see this coin break and here also you are going to be place a coin break okay so similarly for 30 centimeter into 20 centimeter wall so one side is 13 and a half inch okay one full brick and one half brick and on the other side the second wall that is making a corner uh, that is of 20 centimeter mean 9 inch so uh, if this is the particular case then you have to be placed one coin and to make it 13 and a half 4 and a half so here you need a square okay so bat is required to put over here so for 13 and a half inch wall you are going to be uh, placing a square bat to complete four and a half rest of the four and a half in the uh, thickness dimension the lateral dimension and uh, for the stretcher uh, side I means stretchers form it uh, laying of the bricks along the stretcher it is not required the brick bats so because on the other side wall is of nine inch so if nine inch wall be there so direct just one coin brick will be enough equal to nine inches so half of the brick cut along the length is going to be placed uh, as in coin brick for 30 centimeter into 20 centimeter mean 13 and a half inch into uh, nine inch wall so on one side it is 13 and a half and on the other other second wall is uh, nine inch okay so in that particular way this junction has been uh, designed you can say or the laying of the bricks has been uh, decided that how those are going to be laid so the similarly you can see the figure c and d so this is for 30 into 30 centimeter wall so you can see that for the coin like uh, figure b you are going to be place a brick bat over here the similar you have to do for the other wall also if the second wall is also of 13 and a half both are 13 and a half then for one side you are placing a coin brick and also a bat brick bat so similarly you have to do the same uh, for the other dimensional wall other lateral wall uh, then the figure D is also going to give you a 40 centimeter into 30 centimeter, 18 inch okay so 18 inch uh, here on one side I mean two bricks you have to place 9 plus 9 for the header at the back side and for the stretcher you have to place one brick as in stretcher then two bricks and header and then another stretcher at the back to make it total uh, 30 centimeter 40 centimeter okay for header and for stretcher so for both you have to be make this thing so now how you are going to complete it for the 40 centimeter and for along the header course that, that is not going to make any difficulty to coin cloyer you can place over there okay uh, but here you have to be uh, one coin cloyer okay and one brick bat over here and another brick bat over here okay just to be complete this stretcher uh, along that particular length so in this way you can see that including the bats including the queens you are uh, cloyers queen cloyers specifically you are going to be uh, adjust the leftover dimensions for the wall junctions particularly so this corner the conclusion of our discussion regarding the corner junctions are that whatever the type of the bond for the particular type of uh, the brick masonry you are selecting English bond, Flemish bond, header, stretcher, whatever it is, you have to be very careful once you are designing about the laying of the bricks at the junction or at the corner. Okay, that's what very important. So the extreme conditions are when you have 60 centimeter into 60 centimeter wall. Okay, so this dimension is 60 centimeter so you can imagine that how much thicker it is so three bricks you are going to be placed so it is 18 plus 9 okay so three bricks along the stretcher you are placing at uh, to make the thickness of the wall so it is very large wall large thickness thickened wall and here you have to be very careful about the uh, placing the coin bricks uh, in the junction at the junction okay so like this so in uh, continuously you are going to be placing the queen bricks uh, or the queen cloyers specific specific name is queen cloyer so similarly uh, once the flemish bond be there so you have to be again very careful about placing the bricks okay so here you can see again one full brick has been placed for figure a it's 20 centimeter into 20 centimeter wall mean nine inch wall so full brick along the header then full brick along the stretcher then full brick along the header 
full break along the stretcher similar pattern you are going to be follow and at the end or at the corner you need to adjust by placing the queen cloyer and here also queen cloyer in the other other direction so for the both sided wall and for each course you have to be careful about placing the queen cloyers in the junction at the corner now if the 30 into uh, 30 cm wall or 30 into 20 cm wall be there uh, then you are going to be uh, observe a certain hole inside of it so here continuously you have to place the brick bats okay so inside of it so uh, irrespective of the corners at the corners you have to place the queen cloyer okay so similarly you can see for 30 into 30 cm wall these spaces are covered by the brick bats okay and at the corner the queen cloyer has been added so you can observe all of the figures by yourself and you can see that how if we are going to be increase the thickness of the wall then how you are going to be adjusting in some places you also need it to be placed three fourth um, uh, of the brick dimension so that's what is very important so wherever it is needed you have to be placed the parts of the bricks uh, as in queen brick at the junction now next is T junction or English pond and Flemish pond here also figure is given for the T junction of the wall in English pond and for the Flemish pond so here you can see again the thickness of the wall uh, matters uh, to decide the junction when those are meeting so here you can see that uh, you are uh, going to be having a 20 centimeter with 10 centimeter wall so this is 10 centimeter mean very smaller four and a half and this is 20 mean nine inches so here you are going to be uh, placing two courses so one is for header and one is for stretcher so in this particular way you are uh, i have told you that you have to change the course whenever there is a junction okay so whether it is t or it is a corner so once the wall with the stretcher course is meeting uh, with the wall other wall at a junction made, making a junction so it is going to be turned its side around at 90 degrees so you, at turning once the side has been changed then the course needed to be changed so here the stretcher code is course is going to be converted shifted into a uh, header course okay so similarly over here you can see so uh, finally you are going to be ending with your uh, English bond and here it is the wall when you are going to be meeting with 30 centimeter to 20 and here 40 to 30 okay so uh, here uh, I th no need to place any part of the brick but here also we are going to be needing when uh, the difference is 3 into 20 30 into 20 mean uh, 9 inch into uh, 13 and a half so if 9 inch wall is going to be meet so for the header bond you have to be left with one space to be filled with the coin cloyer and here for the second course it's not required uh, but for the 40 centimeter into 30 centimeter wall again you need a 3 fourth bat okay brick bat and you need a queen cloyer over here so these two you are requi requiring to uh, fill the space left okay similarly for uh, the flemish bond you are left with this part so this is half bat you are left with this part this will be uh, uh, three quarter bed here again a half bed so here queen cloyer so these type of the bricks here half bed okay all over the all over there for complete or to fill up the hearting of the brick you need those and for the junction you need a queen cloyer so in this way for the t junction also you are going to be uh, designing your corners Now for the cross junction and squint junction so here you can see for the cross it's again not a problem wherever it is required you are going to be fill your spaces with the help of different bats different coin cloyers okay so but for the squint you can see that maybe a certain uh, random type of the dimensions are required so here you can see that you are cutting your brick at the corner with a certain uh, dimensions those are at an angle okay so here you can see this is a complete dimension about but here you are going to be using a part of it at an angle 
okay so here also you are introducing a brick you are placing a brick cutting at an angle so in between at an angle you are going to be continuing with the wall so similarly here you can say this is part of the brick you are uh, introducing here part of the brick you are introducing and uh, here at the complete bricks so in this way here also part of the brick it's also a part of the brick so in this way the junctions are going to be uh, designed for the squint junctions for at an angle whether it is less than 90 or greater than 90 whatever the case is uh, but you have to be in introduced you have to be placed the part of the bricks at an angle cutting at an angle here in this figure you can also see it is squint coins uh, with english bond so coins mean the bricks you are introducing and you are placing at corners so this is going to make a corner uh, for the squint junction and uh, this is going to give you a certain uh, again angled angular part of the bricks and here also the bricks you are cutting so here the whole part has been going to give you this is complete brick okay this one is the complete brick but this one not going to give you complete bricks so these are the bats similarly this is the bat this is the bat but these are the angular parts of the brick so these parts you have to be placed just to be uh, fill up the queens or you can say the corners junctions so here also you can see all of the bricks this complete part is going to give you a different parts of the brick cut cut part of the bricks angular or complete bats or the queens here you can also see this is also again going to give you the parts of the bricks this is also a part of the brick angular one triangular this is also a part of the brick so in this way the different cut part or the pieces of the bricks you are going to be placed to make junction uh, for the squint Next topic that we will discuss today is the mason tools in the brick masonry. So uh, you can also um, uh, go for it on net. Also, other than this, this enlisted these in enlisted uh, mason tools, you can also find the different other types also. But here, generally used mason tools we are going to be discuss. So first one is the trowel, then brick hammer just to cut the bricks, and uh, lines and pens to level spirit level and water levels properly level you can use straight edge plumb line mason square tape or the for the steel and also any material you can use for the tape to measuring so in this slide the, with the different figures so this is the trowel that is going to be used to level uh, first of all for placing the plaster with for the wall brick masonry for to making the joints uh, for, uh, and uh, in between the courses and also the vertical purpose and then uh, further you can also use it for the level purpose leveling the plaster then you are going to see the brick hammer so it's sharp edged on one side just to uh, break break the bridge uh, brick parts and you can see the line and pens the lines and pens these pens are going to be inserted at two particular locations and in between these lines is just to be make you horizontal leveling so your courses you are going to be laying for the brick masonry should be aligned and should be leveled just to make those level you can use this pens and lines for the similar purpose you can also use the bubble tube or the bubble level so that that level can also be used and you may have the straight edge just to be make the vertical uh, alignment and also you may have the plumb rule and bob to make an vertical alignment for the wall to ensure the vertical alignment of the wall then you have the mason squares so wherever the bricks has been placed so you have to be make sure that all of the bricks are of the same dimensions along the along the corners also so to make your corners aligned at 90 degrees and for the other measurements also wherever the 90 degree uh, alignment is required you are going to be use this mason square and steel tape of course is used to measure the different dimensions so this is the particular way how you are laying brick into the wall above the plinth level 
so this is the plinth level above that you are doing the brick masonry so first you are placing your bricks over here so here you have the brick pad and above that you are going to be having the cord this is the cord that is going to give you the horizontal alignment okay so uh, similarly if the corner is there so specifically you have to be placed the corner corner uh, you have to start from the corners uh, that's what is very trick tricky you can say apart for the brick masonry so it is not recommended to start the brick masonry laying of the bricks from the center so it is recommended that first you are going to be lay the corners and then from the corners you are coming towards the center for laying of the bricks so first of all the corners are going to be placed with the bricks the bricks are laid at the corners and then the center and then you are going to do the tra traveling uh, traveling in the uh, next figure you can see the cord has been placed to make the horizontal alignment and the mortar has been placed so and with the help of travel and it is leveled and also it is going to be pla placing and leveling both can be done by the use of tra travel so this is the use of plumb line uh, plumb bomb and edge edge has been placed this may be wooden or steel okay this edge so this wooden edge has been placed along the vertical alignment of uh, the brick and to ensure the vertical alignment you are going to be attached one uh, plumb bob and uh, this is going to give you the verticality of your brick going to be ensure the verticality or the vertical alignment of your brick wall In the next slide, we will discuss about the reinforced brick masonry. Sometimes the reinforcement are also required within the courses of the brick wall. So if we want to strengthen our brick masonry, specifically for uh, the case when we have the lateral forces uh, incorporated by the brick wall, if only the vertical forces be there, then it will be okay. But if the wind loads in the form of lateral loads are going to be applied on the brick, a wall and also the earthquake resistant masonry is needed to be designed then you need the reinforced brick masonry so this reinforced brick masonry is also uh, you can say a most practical practical thing uh, that you are applying in the construction so your brick masonry done by embedding the reinforcement so that word is very important you are embedding the reinforcement uh, within the plaster and rich cement mortar is called as reinforced brick masonry. Your reinforcement used may be in the form of the steel bars, hoop iron or the wire mesh. We will discuss all these. So you can see that here the steel bars has been placed by giving you a hook. These are the steel bars. Those can be placed within the mortar. So what we can do, one thing is that we can increase the thickness of the mortar to place these uh, uh, meshing, wire meshing or the steel bars you can place over there. And another thing is that in which layer of the course we are placing the reinforcement, there what we can do, we can make a groove inside the bricks here according to the or equal to the dimension of the uh, reinforcement either reinforced bars or the wire mesh okay or the hoop iron whatever you are placing inside this course so in the in this particular layer what we can do we can apply or we can introduce a groove over here and within that particular groove we can input or insert or embed that word is most appropriate that we can embed the reinforcement and then the layer has been completed by applying the generally used uh, thickness of the mortar. So mortar thickness will remain same and uh, consistent within all of the courses uh, for the wall in this particular way. So if it is not required to place the reinforcement in this course, then leave this course. If it is not required to place in this course, leave this course. But only the bricks that you are placing in this particular course, there you can introduce a groove and then you can place the wire now this is a general uh, practice so this is the wire meshing here inside of the bricks hearting of the brick wall 
this is not within the course this is within the within the heart of the wall so you can place the bricks here at the facing and backing and then inside of the wall you can uh, um, you can say you can fill with the help of wire mesh so in this way your wall will be reinforced and similarly the hoop iron so hoop irons are the large large di dimensional steel wires steel bars and these bars is going to be introduced by particularly by placing our uh, the grooves inside the brick wall uh, bricks so next one is constructions of the brick masonry so it is the art of the laying brick in a proper bond with specified mortar to form a structure it involves the following activities so if we are going to be conclude our all conclusions i mean all our all, all, all discussion then what we have to do first step by step so the brick masonry can be uh, that art of the brick masonry can be performed efficiently if we are going to be followed by these activities efficiently one by one and step by step so just to do a very efficient brick masonry or uh, that brick masonry work you have to be select your bricks so depending upon the type of the bricks their properties their their particular qualities physical properties mechanical properties chemical properties so all of these you have to be first of all ensure uh, by different test also and uh, also by the visible uh thing and also by the experience so this selection of the bricks matters a lot then the stacking of the bricks stacking mean on site how you are going to be stack your bricks okay so this is very important because if it is going to be having in contact with the water okay or the on the on the if you are stacking your bricks on uh, the particular soil that is going to be having going to Uh, give you some humid environment okay or you are placing your brick in an environment you are stacking your bricks in an environment that is already humid or windy or salty okay so whatever the case is so in any case uh, water the, the bricks has an ability to absorb the water so if any chemical agent has been mixed with the water absorbed by the bricks on the particular field site site of the project there you are stacking the bricks after purchasing after procurement of the material this bricks you have performed the different test you have selected the type of the bricks and you are coming on the brick bringing those bricks on site so those are hundred in numbers for one type of the project so if you are stacking the bricks on site then you have to be very careful that that particular environment uh, from the bottom till all of the airy environment and all of the interactive environment should not be uh, you can say going to be damage the bricks in any way then the socking of the bricks that's very important so before the you can say uh, laying of the brick it is required to sprinkle the water on the bricks and to make sock the bricks why is it so because whatever the water needed to be absorbed by the bricks are going to be absorbed already once you are going to be apply the mortar then the water present within the cement sand mortar are going to be absorbed by the bricks okay during the laying of the bricks and those are going to be give the going to be less going to be give you the lesser strength of the mortar itself okay so we want to keep the strength of the mortar as it is so for that the water cement ratio is very important what are you are Uh, using for mixing the cement and sand to make mortar is very important so once this water cement ratio has been disturbed for the, this mortar you are placing for uh, the bond for the bonding for the joint joint system that is going to be disturbed so what we need what uh, to do for that th that very slight amount of the water we are going to be used to sock the bricks so that uh, before the hardening of the plaster those water present within the cement sand mortar is not going to be absorbed by the brick wall then the preparation of the mortar that is according to the astm specification randomly you are not going to do that so this is this specifications are c uh, 270 that is mortar of the unit masonry that is needed to be followed so randomly you are not going to be prepare the mortar then the laying of the bricks of course this laying of the bricks includes the brick bonds okay 
that's what we have been discussing from the start of that particular chapter uh, that and um, till the first two parts of this lecture about the bond okay so how you are going to be laying your bricks in the form of course the parents should not be aligned go not going to be fall above each other in consecutive courses in alternate courses those should th those should be aligned but not in consecutive one okay so break bond uh, should be like this that is it is going to be transfer the load uniformly uh, throughout the wall and distributing it or trans transferring it towards the foundation okay so in this particular way you are going to be ensure the laying of the bricks Here you can see the general principles and precautions in the brick masonry. So that you can read by yourself. Okay, I'm not reading it for you. So these listed uh, general principles and precautions you can be read by yourself. So if we talk about the foundation, so this is the sketch showing the foundation for a one and a half brick wall. Okay, so here you can see this is 13 and a half, one and a half inch, uh, one and a half brick wall mean, one complete brick along the stretcher, okay, and half brick. This is the thickness, this, this total dimension is going to show you the thickness of the wall. Okay, this is 13 and a half inch thick wall. So one full brick and one half brick. So here again, if we start from the foundation, the foundation is always going to give you a base of concrete. This is not of the brick. So first of all, a brick pad is required. If one wall is needed to be constructed of a certain thickness, then almost this foundation general for the houses, this dimension is equal to base dimension for the foundation concrete will be 2 feet to 2 feet into 6 inches two and a half fit generally okay so two fit to two and a half fit you can use this concrete foundation and this thickness may be six inches generally so plus minus is allowed according to design uh, but generally for the load bearing simple two story one story houses uh, th th this is enough and above this you are going to be along the dimension you are going to be provide going to provide the three bricks completely okay so nine plus nine plus nine okay so three bricks you are going to be placed first of all and then one step you have to be introduced from both of the sides this is also going to give you a step mean total two and a half so this is less than two and a half and then a certain step has been introduced this step is going to give you the total uh, reduction equal to four and a half so you can see over here above this step you are placing full brick then half brick and then full brick so what does it mean what is the difference between these two step dimension the total difference is four and a half this is full brick two full bricks and one half so mean four and a half has been left so 2.25 from this side of the step and 2.25 from this side of the step you have to make this difference to make a step for the foundation this is a part of the foundation till uh, the 13 and a half inch thickness comes okay till this this will be the first step this will be the second step this will be the third step so till that particular step once the to the actual dimension of the wall started that is going to give you the foundation so this all till here this is all going to give you foundation so foundation is can be further divided into two parts one is concrete part one is brick masonry part so concrete part i have told you then above that brick masonry part is going to be laid in the layers in steps sorry so in, in different steps with total difference of four and a half inch and one is two point over this will remain same whatever the thickness of the wall is so you can start from the top also if you have the 13 and a half thick wall to be laid so below that the first step of the foundation should be going to give you a step 
greater than four and a half inch. In total, two point two five from one side and two point two five from other side. So if it is thirteen and a half, mean one full brick and one half. So two bricks you are going to be laid in the second first step of the foundation. In the second step, you are introducing another four and a half brick. Okay. 2.25 difference from one side and 2.25 adding on the other side then add another step giving a 2.25 on one side and 2.25 on the other side that is going to give you the three bricks in general generally for simple load bearing structures with one or two story uh, the three steps are enough okay so if it will be four story or multi story load bearing brick masonry then you can introduce the more steps also again it depends upon this design this is going to give you the complete foundation design and above the foundation you can see the wall so if 13 and a half then you have to place one full brick and one half brick and throughout you are going to be introduce the coin cloyer and the brick bats and whatever the type of the bond is according to that you have to uh, ensure the placing then another thing you can see over here this is dpc now, dpc is very important this is the plinth level so here you have the wall uh, dimension it may be two feet one feet one and a half feet depending upon your own design but here you have at plinth you have to be introduced the damp proof course this is the dpc a complete chapter regarding the dpc we will discuss in your finals okay so this is not a part of your meta so we will discuss in detail that how the dpc can be provided at different locations uh, during the construction of a building so uh, i'm just leaving this uh, thing by giving you one statement that this dpc is a damp proof course that you have to be provide within the wall at the plinth level okay maybe you will be familiar with the plinth level at the plinth level you are providing it so not uh, exactly at the foundation level above the foundation level certain height is required and then you are coming at the plinth and then at the plinth you are providing the dpc so this is the figure that is going to give you another descriptive form at why bonding is needed so if you are not providing a proper bond uh, your propents are aligned in the uh, coming above each other in the consecutive courses then uh, you may have after the application of the load this can be collapsed the wall can be collapsed in a stack form okay so all the stacks of the bricks can be collapsed can going to give you a failure uh, plane along this stack okay so in the lateral direction also and in the downward mean vertical direction also but if this is pro properly your wall is properly bonded then the load come on that particular wall it can be distributed this is in the shaded form you can see the load has been distributed from wall to wall on right and left side so in this way your load has been transferred so this will be the distribution of the load this is a figure that is regarding the peers that topic you can see by yourself in the book also and also in the slides where the different type of the bond depending upon the different type of the bond flemish bond english bond how the columns can be uh, laid with the brick masonry so if the brick columns are the peers are needed to be designed so how you are going to do that so again the adjustment is required wherever the bats are required you have to you have to place wherever the queens are required you have to place so again the same criteria is there but you have to be keep the dimensions of the peers in your mind depending upon those you are going to be providing so stone pads are required sometimes at the top just to be balancing it and then further the brick masonry you are providing next is the techniques to make a bond between old and the new masonry this is again a constructional technique okay these techniques may be very modern today become have have become now very modern today so whenever it is required so depending upon the situation these type of the techniques vary from situation to situation that which type of the old masonry is needed to be uh, joined or bonded with the new masonry so this is the very simple uh, you can say technique that is called racking so in this way you are going to be leave a certain uh, space of the brick wall uh, from the old so here you can start with the new masonry 
wherever the rack is there I mean in steps you are going to be leave your wall from the old masonry and you are going to be start laying your bricks uh, in uh, for the new masonry by placing the mortar in this particular direction this is this this procedure is called racking then second very common uh, very common may, maybe you have ever seen uh, and observe this is called toothing toothing is that you are going to be uh, make a groove inside the old masonry okay so these are also called recesses so alternatively you are going to leave a groove and then from these grooves you can start the new masonry to be constructed so the bricks you can start laying from this side from this groove and then the new masonry can be bonded properly with the old masonry this is very common technique then comes defects in maintenance of the brick masonry so what defects can be observed due to the substandard materials uh, why these defects I mean what are the reasons so due to the effect of the sulfates sulfates are the minerals those can be absorbed within the within the from it can be solved dissolved within the water and from the water uh, they can be uh, absorbed by the bricks itself those will may, may be cause uh, the chemically can damage the material and then you may have the forced action so forced action can cause the internal clay material uh, can be forced on up and it may be uh, going to be give you the larger in volume and the cracks can be developed within the brick masonry fluorescents are the white color powder that you can see due to the salt present within the water once those are absorbed by the brick and then a brick is going to be uh, show those are going to be um, uh, can be you can observe those salts in the form of whitish powder coming on the surface of the brick and also inside of it it is going to be give you the damage for the brick wall and the bricks pro units proper, properly and those are going to be damaged and their strengths are going to be decreased this is very important all of these four causes or the reasons efflorescence frost action action of the or the effects of the sulfates and a substandard material these all are going to be cause the strength decrement the decrease in the strength of the brick unit itself uh, the maintenance is very important so what you have to do you have to clean the brick masonry side by side you have to remove the efflorescence if it comes you have to recondition the brick masonry and repainting the brick masonry so in this way you can maintain it so uh, once all of these defects appears within the brick masonry then only the solutions are possible from the base or you can say uh, totally you cannot remove these effects so what you have to do uh, you have to be before the construction you have to be keep all these uh, reasons or the sources in your mind okay that how efflorescence comes how frost action comes sulfate comes and the standard materials come so that is not part of your course that uh, to be go in detail about these sources and other things but you have to be an idea about that then comes stone masonry So uh, the units are going to be changed now for the stone masonry. You are going to be use the stones as an uh, masonry purpose for the construction purpose. So the definitions we will discuss today uh, will be cobble, cornice, dripstone, throtting, copping, frieze, spalls. What are these? First of all, cobble. Cobbles are also called as brackets. It is the piece of the stone projected outside. So this is the very basic definition in which the stone you are laying in the brick masonry and that is projected outside of the wall to provide support to a structural member of the roof or the floor. Then comes cornice. I will show you at the end of these definitions the figure in which all of these components you will see one by one. Then comes cornice. It is the large course of the stone masonry provided at the ceiling level of the roof projected outside of the wall wherever the ceiling mean roof level is there you are providing it just to be avoid the water to be having a contact the rain water or any outside source of the water to be having a contact with the wall underneath the roof so that the damp proofing can be there mean more 
dampness cannot be effect or damage the masonry then comes trip stone that is again a projected stone with the two thing this is the difference between the cobble and the drip stone this is with two thing at under surface like this if the simple bracket be there it will be like this okay uh this is what this is there is another difference between cobble and dripstone that it is a structural element okay this is this is going to be provide a support to the structural element so a part of the structural element you can provide it but the dripstone is again to uh, avoid the contact of the rain water to the wall uh, that is that dripstone has been provided so here you are going to be providing a to thing mean a groove inside of it so here you have the wall Uh, you have the roof okay so wherever the roof is there uh, for this at this particular location within the wall you are providing this particular stone that stone have to think or the groove inside at the under surface okay so that is going to be it is provided to through the rain water of the wall so once the rain water is going to be pass going to be fall off or trickle down from this strip stone so it is not going to be come uh down it will come through this two thing and go down so this will be the path then comes throttling so the process of cutting grooves i as, as what i have told you uh, so in soffits of the still a different other locations is called throttling so that two thing that what i have told you mean it introducing a groove that is also going to be called as throttling at different locations so soffits of the cells within the drip stones within the copping what copping is we will discuss uh, in the next definition string courses its purpose is to avoid the dripping of the rain water over the wall that to think specifically is called as throttling okay at different locations now what copping is the copping is a special course provided at the top of the wall to avoid entry of the rain water in the wall this is also a, a kind of a dam proof I mean, if the wall is there specifically for the parapet wall, so a certain projected course you can provide above the wall. Okay, so if you are going to see the cross section, then it will be like this. Maybe any shape. This will be a copping, simple rectangular. It will be a copping. So within the copping also, throttling can be provided. Mean to think groove. so that is going to give you again uh, uh to avoid the water to be enter so from the to think the water come down it will not going to be give you a contact with the wall freeze uh, the stone course provided below the cornice is called freeze or freeze so in the next slide you can see all of the components first of all we start from the parapet wall so at the parapet wall as what i have told you you can provide a stone that is a cope called as copping and within the copping you can provide a groove that is called throttling and then comes parapet wall so within the parapet wall you can also provide a drip course okay that what is specifically provided to avoid the rain water to be contact with the wall and then at the roof level you are going to be provide a cornice as what i have told you cornice is a structural element to be uh, sorry uh, th that is also going to give you at the roof level within the wall that is a kind of a bracket kind of a shade that you are providing with proper two thing so this is uh, freeze again second floor slab then comes the window frame dpc now within uh, below the window you are providing a sill so wherever the sill level is there at the sill level also you can provide a drip stone this drip stone is same that at the sill level you are going to be providing it with a two thing string course is also a kind of a course that you can provide in the form without the two thing kind of a bracket then cobble this is a supporting element that's what i have told you that is inside of uh, the brick masonry mean inside of the structure superstructure so here it is the roof slab so below the roof slab from the roof slab and the brick wall that is going to provide you an angle kind of the support that can be support your brick uh, slab on the wall mean by placing the load of the brick slab on the on the wall that will be a supporting element cobble so lintel is again a sunshade so you can also provide within the lintel a throttling that will be throttling 
so reveal door frame all of these definitions we have been discussed earlier now come to the floor level so floor level mean plinth level inside floor level okay one one flo level floor level is that is at the gate at the porch level from the porch when you come inside of the building or the house then you have to be observed one or two steps and then uh, you can see that one or one and a half foot uh, higher level is observed for the inside of the, of the house that is called plinth level once you will be inside of the house or the building that will be the plinth okay so uh, here you have to provide the vertical dpc again that we will discuss in dpc chapter damp proof course chapter and you have to provide the horizontal dpc so this is the porch level mean outside uh, building level and this is inside building level this is called plinth and this is simple outside ground level so from the ground level let's let's suppose this plinth may be one foot one and a half two foot depending upon your own design and below that you are providing the depth of the foundation as what i have told you this is the actual dimension and below that uh, you have to be with the same thickness and of the wall and then you have to provide the steps and then finally you have to provide the concrete so this is the cross section of the foundation so foundation concrete above that the steps and then actual thickness of the wall and above that if you want to within the plinth uh, within the inside of the building you want to reduce the thickness then again you can do it this is 9 inch thick wall actually so below that it will be 13 and a half going down and then you are providing the steps at the bottom of the foundation and then you are providing the concrete foundation so in this way a complete whole of the wall brick masonry has been done starting from the foundation till the parapet wall uh, and for the stone masonry again this corners this the, these type of the elements uh, are components are going to be introduced then comes block masonry block masonry is interlocked masonry in which the con concrete blocks you are going to be formed with the help of different molds their dimensions depend upon the type of the masonry so if you need the solid block masonry then you are going to be make uh, the different dimensions you can see it's varied in different ways so generally used dimensions are given over here if you want to make a hollow blocks blocks then a certain type of the blo uh, the hollow uh, cavities are introduced within these blocks so if you need the reinforced then within these hollow you can pass the reinforcement mean the steel bars you can pass this is also a kind of the solid block that can make the sill at the bottom of the window you can place these type of the blocks and here you can see these are the pier or the double corner block these are the header block you can see these uh, cavities mean these hollow um uh, forms over here here you can also see these are the planes sides of these blocks sometimes you can see the different grooves uh, within the sides of the brick also this is uh, this solid block also that is also called called as keys in general technical terms okay so keys mean that these are going to be the the, the brick or the solid block and the block those who are going to be interconnecting with this is going to give you a, a different type of the key so these keys are can give you a certain interlocking between these blocks that they, that can be interlocked with each other so sometimes we can provide the mortar and sometimes without the mortar just these keys will be enough to hold the blocks with each other so here you can see this is the smallest dimension for the corners you can provide the different smaller dimensions like bats and queens here you can also provide the different interlocked parts so that within the corners they can be adjust here you can see also this groove or the key so different type of the keys different type of the groove different types of the dimensions different types of the hollow cavities you can provide for the solid blocks so that is going to give you the the solid block masonry so this is it guys for the brick masonry mean whole brick masonry block masonry and the stone masonry chapter so uh, i'll see you uh, during the online session thank you so much guys